Is there a secret? Is it safe? <laughs> I, I, I don't think so, Master Raj. Maybe, maybe, I don't, I don't think so. I had a pint of beer, so I don't know. I don't think so. Well, keep it safe, you fool, fool of a took. Don't let get this information in anybody's hands. They are coming for you, and they want the information on Munglek Joshua. Let's get out of here. Well. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the exposing of the Mongolic Josha secret. And yes, um, I'm making this video after enormous requests from people. And literally, I would say the past three weeks, especially when I made this video on horoscope matching and all of that thing. And people are like, well, about Mongolic Josha? Well, when it comes to horoscope matching, I don't care. If you have severe Manglik Josha or light Manglik Josha, I just don't do horoscope matching. The only time I would ever do horoscope matching is, uh, what is it, what do you call, uh, syncrasy uh, matching. Interlacing of the two horoscope over each other and just showing how a planet is, you know, directing your other planet because of that other person, but that's about it. So Manglik Josha. Manglik Josha is a very famous commercialized term that brings in a whole lot of business for hundreds and thousands of people about, you know, um, saving you from the disaster of marriage. Ow! It's like the stock is going up. And after this video, it's going to go. So yeah, uh, Manglik Josha is for, especially for the Western audience, it's, um, it's a very commercialized gimmick about, you know, saving yourself from marriage and your marriage life and trying to get married and all of that. And there's Hagnas and Yavans and this, Havans and this and that. And, you know, it just, it's kind of became a circus. Um, so I'm going to show you today what Manglik Josha really is. And uh, what is one way or some ways to uh, neutralize the situation of Manglik Josha? And if Manglik Josha doesn't even affect in, you know, people's charts. So that's what we're going to uh, discuss today. So Manglik Josha occurs when Mars, the planet of war, okay, war, fight and flight, aggression domination is sitting in the 12th house first house fourth house seventh house as well as the eighth house and especially in certain astrological tradition especially in south india mars in the second house also denotes to uh, manglik josha which actually i kind of agree with see mars it's all about like i said aggression fight war passion so, especially when Mars is in the second house, second house is about family. It's that magnet of family. And this is where a person will try to dominate that side of family, then it becomes kind of like a war. And this is why Mars in the eighth house creates a Manglik Joshua, because from the eighth house, any planet will aspect seventh from itself, which is what? The second house. But about Manglik Joshua, you have to um, understand one thing is the hora of the sun and hora of the moon that will determine the severity of uh, Manglik Josha and this is something that I learned from Sanjay Rath uh, Pandit Sanjay Rath you know it's funny I used to go to his website early on and I used to see his abbreviation PT Sanjay Rath and you know what I thought I thought that he was a physical trainer. I'm like, Sanjay Rath is an astrologer, but he's also a physical trainer. Wow, impressive. Okay. Because, you know, remember in India, the, uh, or people especially from India know that the PT class is known as physical training. In the U.S., it's called PE class, physical education. So when I saw PT Sanjay Rath, I'm like, physical trainer Sanjay Rath. I'm like, <laughs> but he is, he is training your physical mind, so... 
You never know. So this is something I learned from him and it made all that sense in the world, which comes down to the horror of the sun and horror of the moon. And yes, I'm going to get complicated here. Okay. So bear with me. And if you do not know about horror of the sun and horror of the moon, watch my video that I made. I don't know, five years ago, I think now, four years ago, called horror of the sun and horror of the moon. Watch that video and it'll tell you a whole lot about uh, this concept that I'm about to discuss. It's nothing uh, complicated. See, each zodiac sign is about 30 degrees long. Okay. So take the first 15 degrees of every odd zodiac sign, which is Aries, Gemini, Leo, Libra, Sagittarius, Aquarius. The first 15 degrees of this sign is controlled by sun. Okay. Then take all the even signs like Taurus, Cancer, Virgo, Scorpio, Capricorn, Pisces. The first 15 degrees of these particular signs is controlled by moon. So odd signs first 15 degrees is controlled by sun. And then the second half of that same zodiac sign is controlled by moon. For even sign, the first 15 degrees is controlled by moon. The second 15 degrees is controlled by sun. And just by knowing this, you will know exactly which planet is helping where. Okay. So for example, let's say you are a Aries ascendant. Okay. Your Aries ascendant and for any zodiac sign, Mars is a Munglic planet if it's placed in the 12th, 1st, 2nd, 4th, 7th and 8th house, right? Okay. So we'll assume that Mars is in your 7th house. It's making you a Munglic. Now, is it really making you a Munglic? Check the degrees again. Because if Mars is in the second half of Libra sign, which is controlled by moon, the Hora of the moon, Mars will not act as a Munglic planet. But if you are an Aries ascendant and Mars is between 0 to 15 degrees in the sign of Libra, it will act as a monglic. And that's the first thing you have to know. So when Mars is in the Hora of the Moon, it will act benefic. When it's in the Hora of the Sun, it will act more cruel and uh, I wouldn't say malefic, but just more cruel and hot. Why? Because it's in the Hora of the Sun. It makes, makes it more active. It makes it more alive. It is ready to take on the challenges. It is ready for war. It is ready. To, it's like just on a very like stealth mode. In the horror of the moon, imagine a soldier at home after war. Soldiers trying to get into the rhythm of family life. Soldier has its little, you know, um, PTSD, but he handles it and he then takes care of the family. That's where this Manglik Josha works and doesn't work. Okay, so this is the easiest thing you have to remember. So if let's say your Mars is in the um, 12th house and you're a Pisces, uh, it's in the sign of Pisces, Mars. You're an Aries ascendant. Mars is in the sign of Pisces. Pisces is an even sign, which means it can be divisible by two. And if Mars is in the first 15 degrees of Pisces sign, it is in the horror of the moon. That means it is going to act quite calmly. If it's in the second half of Pisces, which is the horror of the sun, it's going to be alive. It is really going to be showing its um, true merit. It is really going to be just fully awakened and strengthened. So that's the number one thing about Manglik Josha. The second thing that we're going to talk about is the aspect of Mars. See, Mars has a special aspect, four, seven, and eight. So wherever Mars sits, it's going to aspect the fourth house, seventh house, 
and or not fourth or seventh house fourth from itself seventh from itself eighth from itself so if mars is in the eighth house it's going to aspect the third house which is eighth from itself if mars is in the seventh house it's going to aspect the second house which is the eighth from itself so anywhere mars is placed the fourth seventh and eighth place from itself becomes its site it looks at that place but remember one thing about these three aspects fourth aspect is a aspect of protection okay or four fourth aspect is a aspect of protection the seventh aspect directly opposite to where Mars is sitting is the aspect of domination it is going to dominate those things eighth aspect of Mars is the aspect of transformation it is going to destroy that thing and bring something new so in a way it sounds very harsh right destruction but the eighth aspect is about rejuvenation and its transformation change changing something from gold to silver changing something from white to black that's what that's changed that is uh, you know dramatic changes so for example let's say if your mars is in the ninth house okay mars in the ninth house can definitely make a person very disciplined about their religious beliefs spiritual beliefs they will do their meditation and sadhana with the utmost discipline far better than your moon venus and even jupiter so if you read the mythology of these planets you will see how some of these planets get swayed by other things other you know entities mars is like hanuman mars is when it's like okay i am a bhakta of ram i am a bhakta of ram no matter what happens ram ram is everything for me so in the ninth house let's say if it's sitting it's going to aspect the 12th house third house and the fourth house so mars is going to be very protective of his or her spiritual gurus his or her spiritual sadhana paternal grandmother if anybody says anything about the spiritual guru or paternal grandmother they will come after you with a knife and a sword or a gun mars third aspect from the ninth house okay more mars sorry seventh aspect from the ninth house is on the third house which shows the nature of domination dominating friends dominating siblings dominating neighbors dominating through communication when they communicate they want to control the crowd around them then mars aspects the fourth house from its eighth aspect which means this person will bring transformation into their home into their family life family after marriage they will transform they will destroy like it's, i wouldn't say self sabotage their home but it shows that a person will change things about their home dramatically their family life dramatically and especially fourth house represents mental peace happiness they will destroy their mental peace and happiness through their own actions so that's what mars in the ninth house does for example i'm just giving same thing with with the manglik if mars is in the 12th house remember the fourth seventh and eighth aspect mars is going to protect their younger sibling their friends their neighbors and whatever they communicate they're going to try to protect and preserve what they say with their seventh aspect they will dominate their enemy they will destroy their enemy it's never going to be about surrender it's about be either kill or be killed with the enemy then mars aspects the eighth house oh, i'm sorry mars aspects the seventh house with its eighth aspect so from the 12th house eighth aspect of mars will be on the seventh house if you count counterclockwise towards the seventh house Mars will destroy transform 
the relationships with other people, marriage, partnership, or anybody who comes. And this is why Mars in the 12th house, a person will ch frequently change their uh, friendships and their partners. And they will, they're going to want to just, if something's not working, they just want to clean out and bring something new. So this is how Mars works with its aspect. Like Mars in the second house, okay, is another Manglik position. Second house, so, so besides aspect, wherever Mars sits, okay, that is actually, you have to understand, is not the most powerful position. Because if you're sitting on a throne, right, I'm sitting on this, uh, on this chair right now. Wherever I'm sitting, I'm not able to look beneath unless I really do want to look. I want to look beneath. What's happening? Is there something below me? Is there like some spider or something? I can't see it. So Mars is really, no planet is ever really concerned as much when they're sitting in a certain house. Why? Because they're sitting there. When you're sitting at somewhere, you're always going to look in front of you. Maybe even a little bit back, but not below. It just, it's not our nature to do it. So planets, wherever they say, they will not really cause as much havoc. They're just going to do the natural thing. You know, like our heart beats, our digestive system works by itself. Our sleep mode works by itself. Our dreams come on by themselves. So when a, mar a planet is sitting in that house, its significance just takes over naturally. But from the second house of family, where it wants to dominate, it's just its natural nature. It's not going to aggressively pursue it. It's just that it, it is what it is. But it's going to aspect the fifth house with its fourth aspect. It's going to protect children and ancestral uh, uh, education. It's speculative gains. It's going to be very protective of its creative uh, um, projects. Mars from the second house will look directly at the eighth house. The person will try to dominate the spouse's family. They will try to be the ruler of the spouse's family, spouse's assets, spouse's wealth. Mars will look at the ninth house with its eighth aspect. That means it will destroy or transform the relationship with the father. It will destroy and transform your religious and spiritual beliefs. So when you add this in the Manglik context of 12th house, 1st house, 2nd house, 4th house, 7th house, 8th house, that's where this Manglik will come alive, which means that 8th aspect of Mars, especially when it's upon the 2nd house, 4th house, 7th house, especially, that's where a person will feel this transformation. And the thing is, they will try to be, they're going to be naturally attracted to a person who's going to play this role in their life of that Manglik script. They're going to try to like that the person who has the Manglikness will try to dominate it. If something is not being dominated, they'll try to destroy it. Now, I'll give you another scenario. Mars is looking at the 7th house with its 8th aspect, right? It's in the 12th house. It's looking at the 7th house of marriage with its 8th aspect of transformation and change. But now, do we really know if it's this transformation is really for the negative or positive or let's say for heat or cold? Well, which hora is Mars in? If Mars is in the sign of Sagittarius in the 12th house, you're a Capricorn ascendant. Mars is at 10 degrees, which means it's in the first 15 degrees of Sagittarius sign. Sagittarius is what? An odd sign, odd number, number nine. It's in the Hora of the Sun. If it's in the Hora of the Sun, it's going to aspect the Earth house with utmost heat. If it's in the Hora of the Moon, meaning from 15 to 30 degrees of Sagittarius sign, and then looks at the Earth house, it's aspect is going to be far cooler than the first 15 degrees. Which means that the relationship and marriage will be sustainable in the second 15 degrees, even though there will be fights, even though there will be, you know, 
arguments yet they will be the type of arguments that you know like you hear any old married couple go through so that's one or second scenario of our manglik josha the third thing that becomes is the manglik bhang the bhang the cancellation of manglik which occurs in several ways number one if saturn is eighth from mars wherever saturn sits especially when let's say saturn or mars is in the 12th house okay saturn goes into the seventh house saturn is destroying the manglik aspect of mars whatever the manglik next represents that you get so much bombarded with your marketing right on your tv channels internet ads and whatnot about manglik josha should save yourself from manglik josha whatever it's if saturn is in the seventh house it'll cancel that because saturn has the eighth from mars is the death of mars's qualities so like remember eighth house is representing the death and transformation of us well every planet has their death and transformation in your particular horoscope so if let's say for example your mars is in the second house saturn goes into the ninth house saturn becomes the niche bhang of that mars or not niche bhang sorry the 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 yog bhang of mars whatever yoga that mars was trying to create whether it's raj yoga dhan yoga arishta yoga manglik josha it gets bhang meaning it gets cancelled the other way we see it is that if the other person the person that you're trying to marry if their mars aspects your mars it'll cancel it because now both mars has drishti or the other mars either mars should be mutually aspecting each other or if one of the mars is aspecting the other they will try to control that mars like oh i'm aware of this mars i'm aware of your mars i am going to control you because now i saw you see mars can attack from the back so if your Mars is in the 7th house, your spouse's Mars is in the 4th house, they're looking at your Mars in the 7th house. They're the one who becomes in control. But the thing is, because Mars aspects the 7th house and aspects the Mars in the other person's chart, it controls it. But let me tell you something very interesting about Manglik and non-Manglik. Just because you're Manglik, don't think that or let's say, for example, you're not Manglik. Don't think that you're spared from having a bad marriage or no marriage. I have seen too many, too many charts now where a person is not Manglik and still either is not in a happy married life or is not married. So stop wasting your time on the fact that am I Manglik or am I not? It really doesn't matter in terms of having a happy married life. You can have a very very traumatic bad married life if both of you and your spouse's mars are not manglik then the other thing that really matters when it comes to manglik josha why are we looking for manglik josha for horoscope matching right for marriage how suitable is your chart for marriage so which is the chart that you should be looking for for marriage is that the birth chart sure why not but more important it is the navamsha the navamsha chart so when mars creates a manglik josha in navamsha that's where it is really counted that's where it is really observed and just remember one thing whether you're manglik or non-manglik there is no marriage that is 100 percent happy there's no marriage that is 100 percent you know uh, a honeymoon phase so when you do these remedies and all that remember when you do remedies you kind of irritate the planet why because mars is simply a messenger it is bringing this message to you about a uh, a dominating married life a power struggle filled married life it's not Mars, it's just the message. But what happens is you try to hurt the messenger, which is Mars. Oh, do Mars yagnas and Mars puja and, 
you know, do this and wear a red coral and this and that. The, there's a reason why in Indian weddings, uh, a woman wears a Mangal Sutra. Mangal Sutra, especially when it's like pure gold, like 22 karat gold, the highest of quality of gold. Because And that's another subject that I'm going to deviate into, which is gold, which I'm going to bring Dr. Pai to talk about the power of gold. But when a woman wears that, it has this particular protection that has, especially it's known as stotram, mangal stotram. Because when the Mangal Sutra is, is being put on a, uh, on a woman or the bride, the priest will say Mangal Stotram. Now, how well does it work or doesn't work? That all depends on the purity and the vibration of the priest. And the dedication that you're putting that Mangal Sutra on. But whether you are a Manglik or non-Manglik, you just got to understand there's no guarantee of happy married life or guarantee of marriage, guarantee of love and romance, if you, whether you're a Manglik or non-Manglik. However, Manglik people run into far more relationships though. Um, Manglik people are extremely passionate because Mars becomes the soldier of love and companionship. Like Mars is like a soldier is still a human being. A soldier is still in need of nourishment and love. Whenever it aspects the 7th house, 2nd house, 4th house, placed in the 2nd, 4th and 7th house, it longs for either family love or romantic love. That's it. And this is what Mangal Josha really is. It, it's there, there's nothing dramatic about it. I mean, 34. Well, I, I mean, I don't know the statistics, I remember 34 to 42 percent of people are either uh, like Manglik, you know, um, and have Mars in certain houses. So, you know, um, it is what it is. But the, the, the one thing you have to understand about the hot and cool effect. And why is it that Mars becomes cooler in Moon's Hora? Not because Moon represents night and it's cold. It's because when you divide the Hora of the Moon and Sun, Venus, Jupiter and Sun are the daytime planets, which I've learned from Sanjay Rath. And then Moon, Saturn, and, and uh, Mars are nighttime planets. They roll with the Moon. They feel more comfortable in the, uh, uh, in the horror of the Moon. This is why whenever Saturn, even for the most malefic ascendant, is in the horror of the Moon, it'll actually act cooler. It'll act less with its harshness. And this is why Saturn, you know, uh, is an enemy for both moon and sun. However, it acts more severely for the sun, like the Leo ascendant versus Cancer. But especially if for Cancer people, if Saturn is in the, in the horror of the moon, it becomes extremely positive. And especially for Leo ascendant people, if Saturn is in the horror of the moon, it becomes much cooler than what it was supposed to be. Because Saturn is the enemy of the sun. It doesn't want to be in the horror of the sun. It doesn't want to be in the hour, the moment of the sun. Okay. So guys, this is my analysis of uh, Manglik Josha. I can actually make two more parts on Manglik Josha. Uh, but I just want to give this uh, very thorough example where I don't think you need any more example than these on Manglikness and non manglikness okay so if you're new to my channel subscribe below again if you want to know where your mars is placed in your horoscope what sign it's in what nakshatra it's in all the other astrological details my books reports consultations check out the links here otherwise we'll see you later